And welcome back to the MMA After Hour, another week in the books. Time to answer some of your questions. Hopefully you've been firing them away. I know you want to talk about Mayweather-McGregor, maybe some 216 stuff, as that card is coming together October 7th. Sort of cobbled together, if you will. I talked about it last week. They literally went after every single champion out there and Thus far, they've come up with an interim lightweight title fight, 217 taking shape as well. I'm sure there's a lot going on. We're over at our new home, MMAfighting.twitter.com, because the MMA beat is going to be on there too, so we didn't want to just limit it to the MMA hour. Well, welcome back, Mr. New York Rick, as we let our hair down here at the end of the program. Mr. New York Rick, are you there? I'm right here. Oh, there you are. Hello, sir. Hello again. So you have been collecting some questions. What do we got? I have been collecting. Whoa, 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 before we get into oh, what we got, all right, all right. let me show you what we really okay. got. Okay. Shout out to Kevin Collins, uh, the, the plug yeah. at Reebok. Okay. What he did was send me some t-shirts. I have them right here. So believe me, folks, I'm actually wearing this one right now. We're giving three of these away for the best questions. That's not bad. Yeah. It's uh, it's tattoo inspired. It's actually I have the info here. It's uh, a guy named Mike Lucier, uh, who's a tattoo artist out of Rhode Island, working for over twenty years as a tattoo artist, um, and involved in kind of the MMA UFC space. He actually inked Eric Spicely and a few other fighters, um, and that's how um, Kevin was able to connect with him. But this is part of like a whole series that they're doing. Uh, two weeks ago, I wore the Boss Logic. Um, Conor McGregor shirt. There's also one from uh, Gian uh, Liang, who does um, stuff for Fightland from time to time. You'll, you'll kind of see his black and white stuff, um, but they're really doing some some cool artist features. So the top three questions as determined by, I was going to say us, but let's be real. I'm going to determine them um, are going to get one of these t-shirts. All right. You're going to pick it. I'm going to pick All it. All right. How about that? Let's see what we got. Do we have any good questions? Oh, we've got plenty of good questions, all right, my friend. All right, all right, When stuff's on the line, the questions tend to get a little bit better. The because quality. you told people about this, right? Look, you know, you gotta, you gotta stack the deck. That's right. It's a big week. Okay, first stack question from, from Handsome Rob. <clears throat> Is Maymac more signi significant because of uh, who these guys are? Or do you think that Anderson Silva versus Roy Jones Jr. would have done just as well. Let's let's say circumstances yeah. are the same. Right now, you plugged in, and, and we hadn't been talking about Mayweather-McGregor, you plugged in Anderson Silva and Roy Jones Jr. to do the boxing versus MMA super fight. Right now. 2017, right now. we're getting ready for Jones versus Silva? Yep. I mean, it's not even close. Are you kidding me? It's the former. It's because of who Conor McGregor is. It's because of who Floyd it's Mayweather the, is. What do you mean it's the former? It's the former. It's significant because of who they are. It's not the latter. Oh, okay, okay. Um, it's because of how popular they are. Conor McGregor is arguably top five biggest athletes in the world. I think social media-wise, he's up there now these days, at least as far as combat sports are concerned. It's because it's Conor. It's because it's Floyd. It's because he's undefeated. It's because of who they are. It's because of the world tour. It's because of all this stuff. So yeah, it's definitely because of Conor. If this was Stipe versus Joshua, it'd be big. We'd be covering it, but it wouldn't be as big as this. Every media outlet under the sun is going to be there. This is international mega news. This is the biggest thing in sports this week. It's because of who they are. Do you also think part of it is um, the environment from the sense that when Anderson and Roy were um, being talked about in in this fight, there seem to be many more potential challenges for them. Whereas it seems like for a McGregor, he has ambitions beyond the cage. His his head is kind of somewhere else. Um, for Floyd, he's on the you know end of his career and isn't really. Um, there's not really anybody who's able to to test him or that people feel is a suitable kind of opponent for him. Um, Whereas I think at the time, you know, Roy um, still had some some fights left in him. Same for Anderson Silva. There's still some challenges and hurdles to, to kind of clear. I think you're overthinking it. I think it's because Conor McGregor is an absolute megastar, and anything he does is big news. Whether he fights in MMA next, whether he fights Kevin Lee, whether he fights Nate Diaz, whether he fights Khabib Nurmagomedov, he is a megastar unlike any we've ever seen in the sport. And for him to go over to the sport of boxing, to not just fight any random 154 pounder to fight Floyd Mayweather of all people. You can't, you can't script anything bigger than this. Fair. But do you think he could have been as big a megastar five, 10 years ago? 
And I would say the answer is no. Uh, these days are a little different with social media, but I think... So I think it's a combination of those things. He wouldn't have been able to ascend to the status, in my opinion. I think Anderson Silva kind of... What could you know was that guy for that time, and it and it really wouldn't have. Anderson been Silva possible. didn't speak English, so he didn't have. Didn't the, need to. He didn't have that connection with the people. He was never the kind of star that Connor was. He never generated the kind of revenue, pay per view buys. Connor would be a massive star ten years ago. There's no doubt about it. Massive star, but I don't think I don't think this would have been possible. I think this is something different. Well, the good news is we don't have to worry about that. <laughs> it's 2017, and it's big. Oh, we'll try to take away from it. Biggest. Embrace it. Oh, stop. In five days, it's over. Why are you trying to imagine us 10 years ago? Could it happen? Could it not happen? That time's over. Lame. <laughs> what do you mean lame? That ship has sailed. What will be a bigger accomplishment? Uh, beating Floyd Mayweather or being the first double champion in UFC history? The beating, first to, beating to hold both at the same beating time. Beating Floyd. Getting the UFC to allow him to do it. Um, getting in there. And actually beating the guy who's 49 and 0. Let's not forget, Floyd has never been knocked down, let alone knocked out, let alone defeated in a pro boxing match. You know, the double champion stuff is incredibly impressive, especially what he did to Aldo. But then getting the lightweight fight, I mean, that's just a result of him being the star that he was. A lot of other fighters could have succeeded in other weight classes. They just weren't big enough to where the UFC wanted to let them do it, open yeah. that door for them. He was big enough. He warranted the decision to allow him to not defend the title 145 and go up to 155. And by the way, like people were asking like, will you like the, the, the 145 future stuff is interesting. And I know I asked him about it, but for, I feel like that's for next week. Let's just enjoy this week, see what happens. And then we could talk about featherweight champion, lightweight champion, what's next and all that stuff. Now's not the time to really focus on that in my opinion, but back to the question, that was just a side note back to the question to me going in there and beating Floyd in your first professional boxing match. There's nothing that will ever compare to that. Nothing he will ever do in his athletic career, if he could pull this off the way they think they could pull it off, will ever compare to that. Until the next thing that he does. That I mean, what could he do? What could he do? Even if he wins a third title in MMA. Maybe he goes, beats Brock Lesnar in WWE. That's, that wouldn't compare to it either. If he beats Tyron Woodley, it still won't compare to it. We're talking about Floyd Mayweather. Uh, now I'd be... No, we're talking about Floyd Mayweather an in a different sport. It's, a man who has never been beaten in some of the greatest fighters of all time from De La Hoya to Hatton to, to Canelo. And, and I know what the criticism is of Floyd, that he fought guys who are either pre-prime or post-prime, that he weighed. I, I get all yeah, that but stuff. but that's nonsense. I get all that stuff. But the facts are he's 49 and 0. And no yeah. one ever knocked him down. I mean, no. he's lost few rounds. You know what I mean? The criticism of, of Floyd picking his opponents is fine, and you can make that case whatever. But there's no doubt about how where he stands in boxing history and how good he is. Um, so, you know, even if you do feel that way, Conor McGregor beating him would be monumental. Um, you said beating Tyron Woodley. Now, if, if he's holding... Now, I know Max Holloway is the, the featherweight champion. In my opinion, I you know, I still consider Conor um, to have a claim to that, to at least have some kind of stake in that. Um, if he gets three belts, I, I might argue that that's more of an impressive accomplishment just because... This is kind of a one-off. This is kind of something this that requires. I get it. I, I get it. This is a different sport. Three, three belts is something this is 49 else. 49 and 0. If he knocks him out in a minute, come on. But that's the, that's the likelier outcome of, of those things. If he beats him in a decision, now I'm shocked. If he knocks him out in a minute, he not, you know, that's what uh, he was going to do. me. If he knocks him out in a minute, my, I think my head will explode. Knocking out Floyd Mayweather in a minute... You know what Floyd has done over the past two decades? Wait, so you're saying that's, that would blow your mind more than him like technically outclassing Floyd Mayweather to a decision? Well, outclassing. I mean, what does outclassing mean? Uh, seven rounds to five is not necessarily yeah. outclassing. If it's a 12-round skunking, yeah, of course. The, by, by, by the way, I'm not one. I've never said on this show that I think he has no chance. I've never said that he is going mm -hmm. to get embarrassed. But if he does pull off the impossible come Saturday, my mouth will be, you know— this big, this big, right here. Like it's, it's still, it, it, it's, it's improbable. You know what I mean? Absolutely. It is absolutely improbable, and it's shocking. What bugs me about the odds, and they are a direct correlation of his popularity. What bugs me is people will be like, oh, well, he was just a four to one underdog. No, he is not. He should be a twenty to one underdog.
given yeah. the fact that it's 49 0 against 0 0. And and I and I know about the combat sports background, but still, this is Floyd. This isn't this isn't him versus uh Sugar Shane. You know what I mean? This isn't him against Shane Mosley, end yeah, of his this career. This is an all time great. This is an all time great. Not that uh, is, let me not disparage Shane. No, 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 but this, also is, great. this is but the this greatest is fighter of my generation, our generation. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like this is absurd stuff. That I agree with completely. Um, okay, so let's say he does pull it off. Our question from Rambo. If Connor pulls this off, how will the boxing community react? What, is, what does this do for Floyd? What does this yeah. do for the boxing community? What's the, what's the feedback? What's the backlash if Connor gets this done? Floyd said that if he loses, it doesn't tarnish his legacy. It will 1,000% tarnish his legacy. Anytime Floyd Mayweather is talked about from here on out, if he loses, people will say, but he lost to Connor McGregor? That Irish MMA guy with the yep. tattoos, everything gets washed away. It's rare that you could say that, but in my opinion, this changes everything as far as his legacy is concerned. His legacy is 100% on the line, and that's why he has more pressure. That's why Connor is playing with the house's money. That's why he's so loose. That's why he's so relaxed. And that's why, in my opinion, I don't believe for a second that Floyd Mayweather isn't taking this fight seriously. He is 100% taking it seriously because there's one more left, 50-0, you beat Marciano, you ride off into the sunset. You lose, everything changes. And, and I think that narrative is so like easily dismissed. The idea that Floyd is not taking this seriously, you know, you don't become a 49-0 boxer who's outclassed, you know, all his opponents the way Floyd Mayweather has just to you know, give one up on the back end to give one up on the 50 and 0. It's, it would just be un, you know, unfathomable for, for that to be the case. There's no way he's taking it lightly. Um, and it, it, I, I believe it will show in the fight. There's, there's absolutely no chance in my mind that he's not keeping his eye on the prize for this one. It, it, it would have all been for not. I, I, I agree with you completely. Even his dad says everything. Even his dad told me when I asked him, his legacy is on the line. If Connor yeah. loses, everyone's like, yeah, we expected you to lose. Now go back but to your cage fighting. I, I would argue that Floyd's legacy has been on the line in every one of his fights to keep that zero because he's the guy to do that. I think that his legacy has always been on the line, and that's why he's been so good. That's this why he's is different. so prepared. This is different. No, uh, If he it is lost different. to Andre Berto, it would have been a huge upset odds-wise, and everyone would have been like, ah, shucks, 40-1. and one. And by the way, people still don't consider Floyd one of the greatest of all time. They talk about Sugar Ray Robinson. They talk no, about... No, they don't consider they talk him the about best, but definitely the, Muhammad. the greatest. Yeah, yeah. But if he ends 49-1 and one losing to a guy who professionally is 0-0 and, and who the boxing community no, has openly career. laughed at and called a joke and a mockery and and some people say... By the way, there's a, lo a lot of people... And again, the, 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 the deck is stacked. Let's, let's not, you know mince words here's like the deck is stacked but there's a lot of people's legacy on the line here in my opinion max kellerman has said that he won't land a punch repeatedly no come repeatedly. on repeatedly he won't land a punch you're supposed but, to be a boxing pundit well you won't okay, land a punch out. he's saying he won't land a clean punch he's saying you know landing on the elbows and, won't, and okay won't land a punch gets knocked out what happens then what if he does really knock him out i i, I don't know i, I is any no one knows what to expect all i'm saying is everyone who has mocked Man, that I don't that think. that freezing cold hot take Twitter feed is going to have a field day. They are going to have a field day. I think we. I I don't think that Conor McGregor will not land a punch, but I do think that we live in a culture that that type of hyperbole is not punished and is instead rewarded. I I don't think that will have any effect. Let's see. By the way, you know who's been on the Conor train from day one, at least as far as this fight is concerned. The man, the, the first man to say that Connor was going to win and win easily. Do you know who it is? No. It pains me to say, but it's Skip Bayless. Now he yeah, has see, an agenda, that, and he has a motive. Also, and he went this way when everyone was going that way, but he actually has been saying it. So get but ready. There's for such that. a lack of knowledge. Know. For, uh, I'm just saying, get ready and for that's, it. And that's exactly why I'm saying that these kind of pr prognostications and things are not taken seriously and really have no long term effect. You can go out and say anything these days because of the culture that has developed from oh, I know. saying that. I know, stuff, I know. That there's really no repercussions. And that's why I don't like to make these grandiose claims, but people have. But, but I'll say this. If you go back and look how many punches people land on Floyd Mayweather, 
It's not a heap. It's not Look, a lot. He, it wouldn't be too much to say that he could he could land a very low number of. Punches. I haven't said that Max is an idiot. I haven't said that he. But I'm just saying, what if? Yeah, that you that could, blows that you up. Can say whatever you want, but in five days, there yeah, may be yeah, some repercussions. And we will we will see in five days, which is coming very rapidly. Which is kind of absurd. Okay, if uh, McGregor fights again with the UFC, maybe we don't answer this because you said you wanted a. Uh, no, 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 it's fine. Put this way. If McGregor fights again in the UFC, will it be co-promoted by the UFC along with McGregor Sports and Entertainment? Does he now have this platform? Does he now command this? I mean, he may find a way to nudge it in there. What does it all mean, right? I mean, I don't know if it... It means a, a hell of a lot, in my opinion. Sure, maybe it opens a door here or there. Um, I still believe he is going to fight in the UFC. I mean, he's made it pretty clear that he wants to defend his lightweight and as he put it last week, his featherweight title. Uh, so I don't think the UFC was going to let this happen without some kind of assurance that he'd be coming back. So I think that the fears that but, he's not coming back are a bit off base. But uh, yeah, who knows? I mean, maybe. But here's the question. Yeah. Have the terms of engagement between Conor McGregor and the UFC changed? When he comes back, yeah. is, is he it different? He still has four fights left. He still has a contract. You know what I mean? He still has four fights left on that deal, so it's kind of hard to change that. Now, they could sit down and renegotiate the whole damn thing if he becomes this megastar who mm, just knocked out Floyd Mayweather. That's I happened. I mean, that's happened all the time. But he still has four fights left. Let's not. I'm not necessarily thinking monetarily, but that's a valid but point. But that's a part but of the contract, I, right? For sure. But I'm talking, you know, his name is sitting on a boxing ring that was in the you know UFC's Performance Institute during that you know uh, workout. Um, there's not another fighter who can command that. Can he now use that leverage to get certain things that other fighters would not have um, as he competes in the UFC? I think that will be the interesting question. Definitely, I uh, completely agree. Like monetarily, it's a tough situation to come back and say, you know, my my contract is now null and void. Um, but I think, you know, th there's a certain level of uh, respect and, and uh, prestige that he can kind of use to his advantage. Um, because he's gotten it to this point in this fight. I, th I think the game has changed a little bit. I agree. I agree. But, you know, if he loses, maybe they think he loses some of that leverage. Uh, I mean, yeah. the possibilities are endless. It's really a question that you can only answer come Sunday morning. And only if you're Conor McGregor, to be honest. What does he want? What is he, you know, angling for? And also, there is a massive gap between him and anyone, uh, any other fighter in the UFC. So, yep. Uh, he does hold a lot of power right now. They need Would you him. be... In, sorry. Go ahead. No, this was the next question. Okay. So finish that thought. No, no, no. I'm done. Uh, would you consider, or, or should this be a consideration, different glove sizes, uh, like in boxing, um, for heavier weights to have you know, more padding? You know, I actually thought about this when this became a hot topic. Um, I'm not... And the discrepancy is not that large, so it wouldn't be, you know, necessarily sure. like these guys are wearing 16s I feel like that's and these guys are wearing 8s. For a, a doctor, uh, a coach, a trainer, um, a commissioner, someone like Bob Bennett, uh, I, I feel like that's a question that needs to be. I mean, I'm not smart enough to weigh in on that, but I definitely thought about it when this became mm -hmm. such a hot topic. I mean, there's a lot in boxing that's so different than MMA with the different rules and. Uh, I mean, it's just like the, the, with the increased weight classes and things like that. I mean, you could obviously make a case that it's geared towards safety a lot more, but then you could also make the case that the repeated blows to the head and the, you know, the, the multiple knockdown rule and all that stuff yeah. go against that. And that the gloves are actually protecting the hand and not necessarily the exactly. head. Exactly. So yeah. I'm not smart enough, but I definitely said, hmm, I, I wonder if we'll ever get mm -hmm. to a point, as I've said before, we're in 1920s football era, and so much is going to change about MMA in the next 20, 30, 40 years. We're wearing the leather helmets, Yes, though. exactly. Um, is this one of those changes? Perhaps. I'd love to hear someone who's a lot smarter than I am weigh in on that. Question for you. Who hosts an event? Let's call this like independently promoted event first. Zufa Boxing hmm. or McGregor Promotions? I'll go McGregor Promotions. I think that there's a better chance that Zufa sticks to the MMA bread and butter. And, you know, Connor could put out an event in, in Ireland that's McGregor promotion that he's just not on. And I guarantee but you that sells out the, the O2 over there, 10,000 people. Just because there would be attached. people saying, though, you know, where's Connor? Oh, he'd be that there. Would, he'd be Dana no, White. No, I know. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? I know. Lending your shine it's, to it's it. It's like but the Diaz War thing. Of course, that wasn't a huge success and it was a one-off, but like that will- I don't know if that's the best thing. But that will that get them- like, like Diaz could do that as long as he wasn't fighting. Connor could yeah. do this as long Connor as he's not can fighting. Connor do, can do this. I mean, Zufa could probably do boxing relatively quickly if, you know, I they just have don't the think resources that they to want to do it. But it, it's, it's a complete new sport, whereas Connor, he would just have to why would, why, you know, promote some lower yeah, level why fighters. Why would Zufa get out of their their game that they're they're killing it yeah. in and try to recruit new talent and all this stuff? I mean, it just doesn't really make any sense. But I could see Unless Connor, you have a Connor. Connor putting... Well, yes, of course. But Connor putting on a show that's McGregor Promotions and it's just a you know a local European MMA card, I think would be incredibly successful. Yeah. I, I don't think we're too far from that. Okay, let's say Connor makes it 12 rounds, puts in a solid performance, essentially doesn't get finished. What fight does better coming out of that? Hmm. Uh, the Diaz trilogy fight in MMA or a Pauli Malignaggi boxing match? Gosh, this is a really tough question, Kirk, Chase Patrick. Um, Kurt. Kurt, correct. sorry, yes. Um, I'm going to go with, I think that there may be some. Well, here, let me, let me start with this. Let's break this down. Does him putting in a 12 round fight versus like a six or seven round fight and getting finished affect that at all? Like, do you think that matters that's a, in that's, this question? I think he'll get a lot of props for that. I think it will be viewed as yeah. a moral victory. Um, and I think that that's where the smart money is. I think and then does that help the boxing case? To a degree, because I think that there's a feud there and people have enjoyed it for the most part. But I do think that his core fan base is longing for him to get back to what he's best at. And I think that the fight that sells the most, considering who they are, is Diaz. Now, there are options for Conor upon returning. There are intriguing matchups at both 155 and 145, let alone anything else out there that may be, you know, off the beaten path. Um, I think that right now, the Diaz fight, if Connor does well, even without a win, but does well, I think he could do 2 million. I really do. Wow. That's a big number. Yeah. But he wasn't that far off when they fought the second time a year ago yeah. yesterday. And he's a bigger star now. That's much sure. bigger. Okay. What prop bet still makes sense for May Gregor? Has, I haven't seen May Gregor before. Am I, am I, uh, I have actually seen that a couple of times. Um, what bets have you made? And now I'll, I have not made any. I'll, you know, you I'll take any? you aside. I haven't yet, but I'm definitely considering laying a, a, a small chunk of change down on, uh, on Floyd Mayweather. Those odds are, in my opinion, not reflective of kind of yeah. what the just going the, the distance or outright. I would take Floyd outright. I got burned. I got burned when I bet on Floyd by unanimous decision with uh, Canelo and Judge. CJ Ross scored that fight a draw and cost oh, me. Oh yeah. I remember cost that. Me some money. Um, what a what a sham that by was. By the way, it's funny that you ask about prop bets cuz Bovada just sent me some prop bets. You see Let's these? read them. Yeah, let's hear them. We'll have more people with them during the walkout. Mayweather. Uh, Mayweather's a minus 175, Connor's a plus Ooh, 125. Oh, I like the odds on that one. Which fighter will have a longer fight walkout? Mayweather's a minus 155. Connor's a plus 155. Excuse me, 110. Will Floyd Mayweather wear a money team hat during the fight walkout? Yes, minus 400. No, plus 250. Will Little Wayne wear a shirt during the fighter walkout? Is Little Wayne confirmed to be I walking out with him? Is that a thing? I don't know. Minus 230, plus 160. Will Nate Diaz walk out with Floyd? Yes, plus wow. 115. No, minus 116. No way is he walking out with Floyd. So, so that's that, just, that seems like a great that's bet. That's annoying. You're getting damn near even money to say no. Will Justin Bieber walk out with Mayweather? Plus 300. No, minus 500. I told you they're on the outs. Total Donald Trump tweets on the day of the fight. Over six and a half, under six and a half. Oh, over six and a half is minus 155. Under six and a half is plus 110. Will either corner throw in the towel? Plus 800. Yes. No, minus 2,500. Will either fighter lose their mouthpiece during the fight? Yes, plus 425. No, wait, minus 850. I'm so, wait, wait. The one about throwing in the towel, what were the odds on that? Uh, yes, plus 800. No, minus 250. 2,500. Okay. okay. Who will be the first fighter to bleed? Floyd, plus 275. Connor, minus 450. Will there be a boxing rematch in 2018? Yes, plus 400. No, minus 900. Futures. Here we go. Uh, which fight will end first? Mayweather versus McGregor, minus 600. Alvarez Golovkin, plus 350. Will Connor fight mm. in the UFC in 2017? Yes, plus 25. No, minus 175. Will there be an MMA rematch in 2018? So the favorite there yeah. was not fighting again yeah. in 2017. Yeah. 
Interesting. Yes, plus 2,000 for the MMA rematch. No, minus 10,000. And then there's some other random ones like total knockdowns by Connor, total home runs by Giancarlo Stanton on August 26. Or how about <laughs> this one? Those are funny. Total Go runs in the Twins Blue Jays game on August 26, completed rounds in the fight. That is crazy. I love these cross strikeouts ones. by Madison Baumgartner on August 26, complete rounds in the fight. Strikeouts by Cole Hamels on August 26, and then strikeouts by Sonny Gray. This is great. I don't know anything about those other sports, but it seems like there's some money to be made on these props. Obviously, yeah. the stakes are going to be small, and you're, and you're not going to be able to wager too much, but um, I like that. Plus, Bovada, where's my email at? Give me, give me some odds. Send them to my inbox, too. Yeah, Jimmy what Shapiro. Come on, Jimmy. Make it happen. Um, that was good. Perfect timing on Thank that you, one. yes. Okay. Perfect fight for McGregor's return to MMA. Uh, you kind of shied away from this. I, I, I think the DS3 fight sells the most, but honestly, as I've said before, Connor versus a broomstick sells. And, 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 and don't sleep on Mr. Kevin Lee because I think he'll promote the hell out of that fight. What You mean, should he get past Ferguson? Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. He's angling for McGregor. Yeah, I mean he he did it on this show. Yeah, he's yeah, angling yeah. For it, um, I think he's a sleeper in all of this. Interesting. GSP. Any possibility? Any any? I don't feel like there's any heat there. I feel like that's too fabricated. I want to see GSP fight Bisping, and then if he wins, fight Whitaker. And he said if he loses, he's gone. So it may be a moot point. I just don't see it. GSP's too yeah. big. He's fighting at 185. It's it's kind of a shame. Max Holloway is not even like, hmm. you know. Max is there. Max is in that mix. I just don't want to see Conor fight at 145 anymore because he looks like a skeleton, you know? Yeah. So are you going to have him fight at 155? I, you know what? I'm, I'm, I have to apologize to Max Holloway because I completely botched it, and I'm remembering now how good his tweets about Conor not defending the featherweight title. Yeah, was good. He was really going in on him, and I should have featured those in Rick's picks. So let me apologize to Max Holloway because wow. I completely forgot to do wow. that. Wow. Um, Look at that. Slip my mind. I remember remarking about it. You need to Max need Holloway. To those. His his social media game was really good this week. Uh, shout out to Max. I don't want to see Connor cut to one forty five anymore, but I'd still love to see that fight someday. I think that Habib is now behind the eight ball because Connor said, "Like, look, I'm not going to invest in a fight. Yeah, and you're not going to you show up. You and can't so do that. It's tough." He's already felt like that a little bit with Aldo. Yep, yep, yep. There's no way he goes through that with Habib, who's who's got an even spottier track record. Okay, with uh, Junior Dos Santos' recent situation and other similar, shouldn't UFC slash USADA uh, collectively have a better way of dealing with quote-unquote possible PED violations or rather, you know, flagged, uh, being flagged Look, for a violation? Look, I've said this before. Um, you know, sometimes it's, you, you wonder why do they have to come out with it? And so it's weird for me because you want transparency, but then the fighter is branded as a cheater. You're kind of guilty until proven innocent. And that's a tough spot. Um, I actually really want to commend the JDS team for being as transparent as possible. I mean, they came out with a statement and said what it is. You know, initially, it, it, there was no word as to what it was. And I think it was smart that they did that because it could be anything. It's like saying, oh, you got arrested, but you don't know what you got arrested for. Was it burglary? Was it assault? Was it uh, domestic violence? I mean, who knows? I mean, there's, there's a million things that you could get arrested for. And so to just say someone's been provisionally suspended... There could be a million other things that, you know, you took in your system, violations, who knows what, what the infraction was. So I think that JDS's team really did a great job of telling everyone what happened. They've sent out several statements. JDS even put out a statement himself via his Twitter feed, a video statement. I think they've done a great job in that regard. Um, and so we'll see what happens. He seems sincere. They seem honest. Um, you know, I think it's better to view someone as innocent before just calling them a cheater right off the bat. We've seen some cases where in retrospect, maybe that was a mistake, but yeah. I, I could see why the fighters would prefer that it doesn't get out there until it's all cleared up. But then I also understand why they want to be fully transparent. It's a tough thing. Yeah. With Brian Stan leaving, do you think this opens up the door for Daniel Cormier? To step into a full-time gig as an I don't know about full-time gig because he's still an active fighter, but it certainly gives him more opportunities. It gives Cruz more opportunities. And I think it gives Dan Hardy more opportunities, who's been really good as of late as well. I don't think it necessarily increases Joe Rogan's opportunities because I feel like those are going away slowly but surely. But I think it 
gives those other guys a bit of a bump, no doubt about it. This is a massive blow. I think Stan's going to be okay. I think he's not taking another job unless he's being compensated and it's a big opportunity. He wasn't fired. He's moving on. But that being said, this is a huge blow to the UFC. Brian Stan elevated everyone's game. He raised the bar. He started talking to the fighters beforehand, every single one on the card. He did his research. Uh, he, in my opinion, was the gold standard. And I feel like we'll be missing him. But that being said, because he came out and did this, he made Cruz better. He made Cormier better. He made Hardy better. He made everyone better. I think he redefined what it means to be a UFC analyst. And I, I think that his legacy is now being felt. So we'll miss him. But I think it's in a much better place than it was a couple of years ago when there was essentially just one UFC analyst. Cynthia, the homie, asking if McGregor wins, will I cut my man bun? The answer is no. Wow, I love that one. Can we put that on the line? No. Okay. What are you putting on the line? I got nothing. I'm just going to cover an event, do the MMA hour on the road, try to survive, get back here, and then attend my sister's wedding in less than two weeks. Congrats. That's so awesome. Thank you. Um, are you putting anything on the line? Is this time now for your official prediction? I, I said earlier, I'm going to bet on, I am betting on Floyd Okay, Mayweather. that's the official I prediction. am putting money down. Mayweather decision? Uh, that's not what I would be betting, but do I think it will go to decision? Uh, I think I'm liking a decision. I do think there's a, there's a possibility that Floyd could, um, see, here's, here's my issue with this fight. Okay. Floyd is the pick outright. No, no doubt about it in my mind, but there's two possibilities here. Floyd could either truly be done at 50 and 0 and chase a finish and likely get it. I think there's a high possibility he could get it if he wanted to. Or he could be thinking rematch or just leaving his options open, making himself seem a little vulnerable and carry Conor McGregor to the to the decision. I'm not I don't know which way he's going on that and I think it's ultimately his call. I think Floyd Mayweather controls how this fight ends or doesn't end. Um so I don't want to I don't want to officially wager on that. Okay. I'm not I'm not willing to go that, Let's just that put far. Wager aside. What do you think happens? What's the prediction? I think I I lean toward a decision. But again, his motiva his motivations are unclear to me. He could walk away at 50 and 0 yeah. or he could be angling for that rematch and carry uh, Connor to the finish line. I don't line. think he wants that one at this point. What? What one? Like the rematch? Yeah, I, I just it, there's no rematch if he wins, right? If he carries Connor, let's say he, he let's say he makes this, you know, an no. eight to f eight to four, no, I don't see or that. or a seven to five. Mm. There's money to be made, yeah. and maybe maybe you know there's a Mayweather Promotions fight that Connor could fight down the line. Like I, I think there's all kinds of opportunities and reasons why Floyd Mayweather may not want to put the pedal to the metal on this fight. Um, or he could want to go out 50-0 and 0 and just make a statement and say, ha, you know, everybody thought that this was going to be competitive uh, or at least the, the betting line moved to a competitive place and just finish it. Um, but I don't know. I don't know where his head is at on that. So I would only take Floyd outright. That's my... There it is. You heard it. But no man bun on the line. No, of course not. Cynthia, how, well, how dare how you? How dare you? But shout out to Cynthia. <laughs> uh Dallas, New York asking, can I please have one of those awesome Reebok shirts? It would be a sweet belated birthday what? gift. That's all you're bringing to the table, Dallas? Guess what? It worked. Okay, wonderful. You asked for something like that? Bon fit. And you get it. Yom huladet sameach. Dallas, you know what? No, really though. Dallas uh, underscore New York asks a lot of questions every single oh. week. Um, and I'm going to reward him in this case. Oh. Happy belated birthday gift. You're going to be one of the winners. What a match. Um, and that's it for our questions. Let, let me just run through the winners and then maybe we can hit any other topics that we didn't uh, hit if you want to. Um, I liked Dallas. How many I are there? Three. Okay, Dallas one. Um, I think this question is interesting uh, about the boxing community's kind of feedback on uh, Floyd May Mayweather. So Rambo, you're going to be another one. Okay. This one was pretty good too. It was a thinker. Um, or actually maybe let's go with Zach here who asked about who hosts an event for a Zufa boxing or, or McGregor promotions. So Zach, uh, Dallas underscore New York and Rambo are our winners. 
uh, for today. And uh, you can thank Kevin Collins at Reebok um, for hooking it up. Wow. And all the great stuff that they're doing over there. Let's see it, the shirt. Oh, you're not wearing it? I am wearing it, but the but the design is on the back. Oh, oh, I see. So, I see, I see, I see. This is the same shirt, oh, but the design see, is I on see, the back. I see. All right, there it is. Boom. See? MMA Hour. The gift that keeps on giving. Look, it's a big show. You know, I thought it was appropriate the to The gift that keeps on giving. People. We're doing three shows. You won't be a part of them because you're too cool for school. I've got other obligations. Yeah. But we got a great team going over there. Yeah, you're, I'm looking forward to it. Yes, 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 yes. You realize how confused you got John Cavanaugh, right? Oh, did I get him confused? Yeah. Because you go, we're going to do the MMA hour. Yeah. And he's like, oh, so you're going to be there next Monday. That's clearly the next logical leap. Uh, he's not He's he not understanding. Yeah. Like, he didn't see that you're tweeting like, oh, we're going to do yeah, it yeah. Tuesday, okay, Wednesday. Okay. You know bad, what I mean? My bad, my bad. So he I was completely that. confused. I watched that. Um, but uh, hopefully you can I could link up with up. him there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I watched that. I'm sorry, John. I thought he was watching. Top of the show. No, it's, it's, you know, his mind was in the right place. Oh, yeah. It would have been, it would have been he great to do He still has to tell me about the corner. There you go. Um, you know where you can get that. You can get that on the live MMA hours. Or that. Uh, or my WhatsApp. He said he's going to send it to me later tonight. Nah, maybe save that for the, <laughs> save that that's for the show. That's true. Breaking news. Dun, 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 dun. So that's Wednesday, uh, Thursday, Friday. And then we're also doing the MMA beat live from Radio Row not really sure what to expect, if I'm being honest, but I think it's going to be a fun time. We've never done this before, and I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a different kind of fight week. They're doing the arrivals tomorrow. I'll be there uh, Tuesday afternoon for that, and then there's a press conference on Wednesday at, I think, 1 p.m. Pacific, if memory serves me correct, and there's a couple other things, and of course, the weigh-ins and fight night on Saturday. We will be there. I can't wait. It has been a fun ride, but I am tapping out. That's it. I'm tapping out for now. I am emotionally spent, and we haven't even started fight week. New York Rick, thank you very much for compiling those. Thank you very much to everyone out there for sending in their questions. Thank you very much to everyone for tuning in, for stopping by. You can hear my music. So we have come to that point, my friends. And usually I say goodbye, and I say, we'll see you out there in Las Vegas, and we'll do videos and things like that. But this is just the beginning of what promises to be a very memorable week out in Sin City. Three more shows to come this week. How about that? They'll be different. They won't be as long, probably in the two-hour range. And uh, a lot of in-studio guests, if you will, or at least face-to-face -face guests. That's the plan, at least. But again, this is uncharted territory. It might just be me talking to all of you for two hours. Who the hell knows? But we'll find out sooner rather than later. And then, of course, there's going to be a lot of the other usual stuff that you've come to expect from our Fight Week coverage. So stay tuned for that. It has been a fun ride. I'm going to miss this. I'm going to miss talking about this wacky fight. I think I'm ready to actually see it go down, but I think the buildup has been fun. For the most part, there were a couple of bumps along the way, but for the most part, I think it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. It's been... It's been unique. It's been interesting to watch the two worlds come together, talk to people like Lou DiBella, pick their brain. Everyone has a take. And it's rare that the eyes of the world are on combat sports. And one half of that equation is an MMA fighter. That's rare. And I've enjoyed it. I want to thank everyone who stopped by today. Thank you very much to Kevin Lee. Good luck. October 7th. Thank you very much to Derek Lewis. All the best to him. October 7th as well. Thank you very much to Bob Bennett. Great stuff from him. Thank you very much to Dave Fogarty. Thank you very much to Lou DiBella for making the trek. Thank you very much to Cody Garbrandt. Of course, John Cavanaugh. Best of luck to him on Saturday. And the great Mick Constantine. Thank you very much to him as well. Back next week. Same time and place. Until they say peace. Somebody out.